Welcome to Manifested Publishers. Hello learners, my name is Stephen Kariongi. Welcome to our today's topic of discussion. Uh, we are discussing genetics. And uh, at this point, uh, we are going to discuss the relationship between genes and DNA. During the last lesson, uh, we discussed uh, the chromosome and we say that uh, a chromosome is a thread-like structure located within the nucleus of a cell. And that chromosome contains genetic material that is in form of DNA. And that DNA is the one that determines the characteristics of uh, an organism. So we want to find out what is the relationship between genes and DNA. And uh, we can start by saying that uh, a gene is a portion of DNA. A gene is a portion of DNA that codes for a particular that codes for a particular uh, protein, that codes for a particular protein. And then these proteins are then assembled together to obtain the entire organism. So, we are saying that a gene is a portion of a DNA that codes for a particular protein. So we have very many genes coding for a particular protein or coding for different proteins. And then when those proteins are assembled together, they determine now how the entire organism will be. Now, uh, previously, there was uh, very little that was known about the DNA uh, until uh, 1953 when uh, two scientists, uh, that is Watson and Crick, they determined the structure of the DNA. And they explained that DNA is a double helix structure or is a double-stranded structure. So we are saying that uh, in 1953, Watson and Crick, these are two scientists, explained, explained the double helix or double-stranded double helix structure of DNA. That is to say that DNA is made up of uh, two strands as shown. You can say as shown below. So the DNA is made up of one strand coiled onto another strand and this is what we are calling the double helix structure of DNA according to Watson and Crick. So we are saying that along this structure that's where we have the genes and those genes are the ones that code for particular proteins such that when those proteins are assembled together, they determine the characteristics that we have. Uh, for example, uh, how dark or how light our skin is, is as a result of a skin pigment that is known as melanin. So melanin is a protein. So is a protein that determines the, the skin color. 
So when you go to another protein in our bodies, it determines another trait. So a combination of all those proteins are coded for by different genes. But when all those genes are collectively brought together, they bring about a person. So let's say that person is tall, there is the gene for tallness there. That person is dark, there is the gene for dark skin. So all those are combinations that come as a result of different genes coding for particular proteins in our bodies so that we can have the entire uh, organism. So the Watson and Crick didn't just explain the double helix or the double stranded structure of the DNA as shown there, but went on further to explain what are the components of the DNA. Components of DNA. And these two uh, biologists explained that the DNA is made up of three components. There are three components. One, so we are saying that DNA is made up of three components. One, or A, we have a five carbon sugar. We have a five carbon sugar, also known as a pentose sugar. Then a phosphate molecule, a phosphate molecule, and a nitrogen base or nitrogen bases. So those are the three components of a DNA. There is a five carbon sugar, a phosphate molecule, and nitrogen bases. There are different nitrogen bases. Uh, E.g. we have cytosine, there is guanine, there is adenine, and thymine. So those are the components of the DNA. There are three, five carbon sugar, phosphate molecule, and nitrogen bases, of which the nitrogen bases are four. The nitrogen bases are four. Now, a collection of a, a five carbon sugar, a phosphate molecule, and a nitrogen base, we refer to it as a nucleotide. Five carbon sugar, phosphate molecule, and a nitrogen base is called a nucleotide. That is a combination of each of the three components. One of these, one of these, and one of the nitrogen bases, they make a nucleotide. They make a nucleotide. And because the DNA has several, several nucleotides, a combination of every three at every stage, we can say that the DNA is a polynucleotide. It is made up of many nucleotides. And you can say that uh, since DNA has many nucleotides, it is referred to as a polynucleotide. It is referred to as a polynucleotide because of the many nucleotides. So we are saying that uh, uh, DNA has many nucleotides and therefore it's referred to as a polynucleotide. So we're going to have an example 
uh, showing how the different structures of the DNA are arranged, incorporating the three components of the DNA. So we'll have that in form of a diagram. So we have the, the two strands of the DNA as shown there, but now this one is untwisted. Untwisted uh, DNA strands. They have been untwisted. So we are saying that uh, they are the three components. I'm going to show how they are arranged. So we have the components of the DNA on every strand. So at this point, between this point and this point, we have the phosphate molecule. That is from this point to that. Then we have the five carbon sugar. So one, two, three, four, five, five corners. Then inside here, we have the nitrogen base. We have the nitrogen base. And of which we are saying that the nitrogen bases are four. We have guanine, adenine, thymine, and cytosine. So the amount of cytosine and guanine, they are equal. And therefore... Guanine pairs with cytosine, or cytosine pairs with guanine. Adenine and thymine, they pair up together because the amount of adenine and thymine are equal. So, if we have cytosine here, C, here we shall have guanine, that is G. If we have adenine here, then on the other side we shall have thymine. If we have thymine here, we shall have adenine on the other side. So we call that base pairing. And then if you have, uh, again, guanine here, we'll have cytosine there. <coughs> so they are connected through some weak bonds that are, Hydrogen bonds. We have hydrogen bonds. That's a, hydro a hydrogen bond. In between each base pair, we have hydrogen bonds. So we are saying that uh, this is untwisted DNA showing the phosphate molecule, the five carbon sugar, and the nitrogen base. Every set of the three makes a nucleotide. Another set of the three makes a nu nucleotide. Another set makes a nucleotide. And that's why we're saying that the DNA is a polynucleotide. Has many nucleotides. It has many nucleotides. <coughs> so we can say that... Uh, the amount of cytosine is always equal to that of guanine. And this explains why cytosine always pairs with guanine. Cytosine always pairs with guanine. Also, the amount of thymine is always equal to that of adenine, the nitrogen base adenine. 
and this explains why that is uh, thymine pairs with adenine. So you can be able to see here, cytosine is pairing with guanine because they are equal in amount. Adenine pairs with thymine. Thymine pairs with adenine. Guanine pairs with cytosine. So that base pairing. So you are saying that this is called base pairing. The fact that adenine pairs with thymine and cytosine pairs with guanine is called base pairing. So at that point, we'll have uh, another diagram whereby now we have the twisted like we had uh, before the twisted DNA. Uh, the DNA showing base pairing. So we are saying that adenine with thymine, cytosine with guanine, A with T, T with A, G with C. So we have the DNA showing how the bases are paired together. G with a C, A with a T, uh, T with an A, G with a C, and so on and so forth. So that is what you are calling the, the base uh, pairing. And then the diagram here illustrates uh, the base pairing, just like that, but showing the other components of the DNA, the phosphate and also the 5-carbon sugar. We'll have an assignment at that point. So the assignment explain the DNA as a polynucleotide. Explain why we say that DNA is a polynucleotide. Uh, two, name the components of a nucleotide. And three, a DNA strand has the following nitrogen bases, C, G, A, A, T, C, C. Show its complementary DNA strand. The complementary DNA strand. So we'll stop there until next time. Goodbye.